Good morning. Welcome to today's Weigh In Wednesday. Before we get started, I want to break my fast because it is a little bit later than normal. It's about 1230, which is a little longer than I normally go for my intermittent fasting. I intermittent fast from 7 in the evening and then I don't eat again until usually between 11 and 12 the following day. So it's a little bit late and I need to break my fast. So I am going to do that with my Gem Bite. I really enjoy the taste of those. I look forward to breaking my fast with these Gem Bites. So that is the multivitamin that I take. And for me, it tastes like a chewy granola, almost like a cookie. Very nice flavor. It's citrus forward with a little bit of ginger in the background. Let me show you one. You can kind of see just by how it breaks that it's not dry at all. It's very pleasant. I don't dread it at all like I used to and it was so difficult for me first of all I can't swallow a pill so what I would have to do is crush up those horse pills or pop them open which is not easy and pour it into applesauce it's just so hard to do that every day and then you don't look forward to taking your vitamins or I was doing the what I call gummy bear vitamins and I would literally take a handful of different gummy vitamins in order to get all the nutrients that I needed. Well, this for me works. It is a, what I call a cookie bite. It tastes good. This is how I break my fast. So it's just habit. It's a habit that I've formed. I do it every day. I look forward to it and it works for me. Now that I've been doing this for a little over two months, it actually works for me. I'm starting to see the benefits of my nutrition panel in my body being better. So let me just read you through what comes in these vitamins. You've got vitamin D, calcium, iron and you know iron is so important to me potassium vitamin e thiamine riboflavin niacin vitamin b6 vitamin b12 and there's more you get seven in a packet so if you utilize the subscription they send you these in a packet seven per little packet and that way you know you know what you took you know how many you took when you take these you just open up a new packet so I really enjoy taking them so I'll leave a link right here for 50% off your first subscription I'll also leave that link down below in the description box if you want to try something a little bit different if you're tired of taking the horse pill or a handful of gummies then this might be exactly what works for you the way that it works for me all right, so how did my weigh-in go? How did the week go? How's my blood sugar looking? Let's talk all about that. So first of all, I have continued to track with both my CGM and also the blood sticky thing. Tracking my blood sugar, making sure those numbers look good. Let me make a little confession. I tested the waters a little bit, and I know I said I wasn't gonna do that, but I did. It was 4th of July and I tested the water a little bit. So my daughter brought a cookie cake, you know, the ones with the icing and everything on it. I didn't need to eat any of that. I truly didn't. It's not even in my system anymore, meaning I don't crave sugar the way that I used to crave sugar. The less sugar I eat, the less sugar I want. But in the moment, what did I do? I said, give me a half a piece and make sure that it's the end that has the icing because I'm pretty sure my blood sugar will handle it. I have not had one off track anything, nothing, nothing for six weeks. So I thought, you know what, I, I, I kind of want to see what my blood sugar does. So think about this in the shape of a little pie, because you know the cookie cakes, you know the one I'm talking about. So in the shape of a pie, she gave me this back end of it, where the icing was along the outside border. And that's what I ate. That's the only thing that I ate. And then we went about the rest of the day, the rest of the evening. When I got home, I took a walk. My blood sugar was at its spike, at its peak, 182. Oh no. I was stunned. I could not believe it. I was absolutely shocked. And my friends, that was after I walked. Can you imagine? And you know what that said to me? Do I think that one spike will hurt me? Of course not. That one spike 
will not hurt my A1C when I have it done at that three month mark. But my gosh, the education that I got from that, probably one chocolate chip cookie with some icing on it and my body could not handle it. I know as I look back, I think, my gosh, how much my blood sugar was probably spiking all through these past months when I would get a little bit loose, get a little bit off track. I just can't. And that's why I don't call it on track, really. I call it on track for all of you so that you can easily determine if you're learning low carb, what is on track and what is off track. But for me, there is no track. I just don't eat a lot of carbs. I literally cannot eat sugar. I just can't. And things that metabolize into sugar, so the garbage from the pantry, you know what I'm talking about, the crackers, the cookies, the veggie straws, the Cheez-Its, all of that stuff that we like to try to work into our plan, I can't. Me personally, I can't. You, can you? I don't know. And if you don't know, I'm going to strongly suggest that you either get the finger stick thing, I'll link what I'm utilizing for that below in the description box, or get a CGM. The reason I like the CGM is it's really, really easy. All you do, do I have my phone here? not cheap to wear a CGM. It's a couple hundred bucks, depending on, you know, if you want to do it for one month or two months or however long. But for me, the investment is very well worth it. That's why I do the CGM. And also I buy the finger sticks because I need it to be accurate for myself. But this is very accurate and easy. You pop it in your arm and then all I'm going to do, you can see, I'm just putting that up to my, to the monitor and it tells you what your blood sugar is reading. So for me, mine is at 100 right now. So that's how I'm determining. And the other really cool thing that I like so much about it is it's not just that one scan. It also gives you what your blood sugar is like literally all the time. So you know how it climbed, you can see you can see how what you ate caused your blood sugar to climb and crash. I'm telling you, I personally really enjoy having it for the education of it and for me to understand what some of these foods are doing to my body. I could not, I'm telling you guys, I was shocked by it. So guess what? Who on earth? So guess what? I am not eating that ever again because to me it's kryptonite. Why would I ever eat that? Why? Why would I chance that? It's not worth it. So if you're like me and that would help you not eat the food, who would eat food that's physically harming their body? It's one thing to just say, oh, I know if I eat that, I'm going to put weight on, but it's a totally another ball game to say if I eat that, I am biologically harming myself. I am causing myself to do physical damage in my body, which could potentially shorten my life. That's how I look at it. That is how I look at it. So for me, it's the equivalent of going and eating, taking a big bite out of codfish. I'm allergic to it. It's going to make me sick. I just don't go near it. That's how I'm looking at sugar now. So if that would help you, it'll all be linked in the description box if you're interested. So what did the scale say this week? So if you watched my last week's Weigh In Wednesday, you know that coming off vacation, I put some weight on. I couldn't figure out why. I thought I knew why. I thought that it was due to inflammation. And I now truly wholly, completely believe that's what it was because I am back down in my goal weight window, which if you're unfamiliar, my goal weight window is between 140 and 145. So I bounced out of that when I had this weird inflammatory response to I don't know what. I think it was really hormonal in my body. I talk about that all the time. Again, if you're interested in talking about that kind of thing, we go into a lot of that on my other channel, Living Life over 50. We talk about all things women over 50, menopause being one of them. So that's what I think it was. I could feel it everywhere all over my body. I mean, even my bra didn't fit right. And anytime that happens, I'm like, oh, something's going on with my hormones. So 
it just sort of, I didn't change anything. I didn't course correct. I didn't reinvent the wheel. I just kept eating the way that I eat and that weight came off. So would I call that a 3.8 pound loss? No, because I don't think it was a gain. I dropped back into my weight loss window, my maintenance window. So it was a good week, but I'm telling you, in terms of education, it was even better because I learned so much. So this week, I have a lot of good things on deck for food. So this week, I have a lot of good meals planned, and I'm trying to think of how I want to word this. I'm not entirely comfortable calling meal prep meal prep because I know that a lot of you see the words meal prep as making the same thing over and over and putting it in a little Tupperware and that's what you put in the microwave and you eat it. I don't do that. For me, it's more like make more than you need and you have leftovers. That's how I like to do it. Why? Because I cook. I cook all the time. I work from home. So I can cook throughout the day and I enjoy cooking. So I almost wonder, do you have any ideas? Like I was thinking about maybe calling it what I'm eating for the week or meals for the week. I just don't want to put out their meal prep because I don't want anybody to think I'm making like rice, hamburger, and vegetables and putting it in a little container because that's not what I do. Even the desserts that I make, like if I do a little chocolate mug cake or something, it is one single serving. So what do you think? What would be a better way that we could kind of help everyone understand that these are basically recipes. You know, these are things that you can duplicate and make every single week if you want to. So for example, I might make a dozen deviled eggs. I'm gonna eat those through the week. Or I might make chicken salad enough for three chicken salad sandwiches. Cause who's gonna make enough for just one? A lot of you are like me and it's maybe just yourself that's on an overall weight loss journey. So if you're only cooking for yourself and you think about that, if you make yourself a small vegetable lasagna, then could you call that meal prep? Yes, but would that be confusing? Yes. Basically, you're making four servings for yourself. So that is my weigh-in for the week overall. Very happy with it. Very happy with what I've learned. Very happy with the fact that I am not going to be tempted by anybody's cookies, brownies, or whatever it is they made because my body is not on board for it. So I will see you in the next couple days for a meal prep, meal making, what I eat. I don't know. We'll see what we call it.